Turtle Wax is a brand which I haven't really bothered with for a long time, not since I got into my whole car care thing, and that's because I felt like their product range had stagnated a little, there wasn't anything new or exciting happening. However, they have recently released uh, a batch of new products, and I have three of them here today to have a look. So this is three of the new products which I'm going to call their hybrid line and that's because each one has uh, a section here that says hybrid um, so it's going to mean something. Hybrid usually means a combination of one and another thing together, it's a, it's a bit of both. Um, so we're going to have a look at these three products. There's also two other products which I haven't tried um, and I'll talk about those in, in just a minute. So um, first of all, um, this is dry and shine rinse wax that's what it says here get it up there for you now this is much like most of the other products that you've seen it's a spray on rinse off product um, designed to give you um, repellency water repellency that kind of just waxed look perhaps not with the the looks of it but certainly repels water um, there's lots of these on the market but for what you get in this one this is a 750 mill bottle um, this one is well it's usually on the market for or i've seen it in shops for about 10 pounds and i picked it up for 7.99 that's quite a lot of product for the money this could be one of the best value ready to use spray on rinse off products that's a pretty good price eight pounds for that um, that's a decent amount of product um, another one here another protection product is their um, their sealant it's a hydrophobic wax now, um, being a hybrid sealant, it has a bit of both. It says it's a synthetic sealant fused with carnauba wax. So that's a bit of both. The, the synthetic uh, will provide the longevity, the, um, the long lasting resilience. And the carnauba wax tends to help give things a, a better glow um, and a, a nice water repelling finish. So this is a bit of both. That's where the hybrid comes in. It's, it's two different things. Um, Lastly, and the one I am most interested to try, is their Jet Black Spray Polish. Now this product, um, they already make a Jet Black, a Jet Black, a Jet Black Polish, and it's in a normal polish bottle, the kind of thing you would find. It's a, it's a liquid paste stuff in a bottle you tip onto a cloth and then work it in. But this is a spray one. I've never really seen a spray polish before. I've heard of a spray polish and I thought that that company had the patent on it but perhaps not so it's um it's a polish and a filler and a wax all in one they mention here pigmented polishing agents that's black hence the name is black it's black pigments it's um I think they called it pigmented platelets yes on the back pigmented platelets last time I heard about platelets was um at school in science class you know um so they'll be the, the fillers, black fillers, and it contains synthetic wax as well. So it's, it's a bit of everything. Um, it also does say that it has microfine polishing powders to remove swirl, swirl marks, water spots, and paint contaminants for a smooth finish. So it's much like many other three-in-one polished products out there, but it comes in a spray format. That's interesting because, well, I think you would use less of this than the kind you would use, um, which is a paste type. So um, we're gonna give these a try. First up is gonna be the spray polish. All right, so due to audio issues, I have to re-record this. Make sure you give this polish a really good shake because obviously it contains those microfine polishing powders and the pigmented platelets. It's a very atomized spray, as you can see there. Uh, it goes a long way, it goes far across. You can see it on the pad there too, and that it is pigmented it's dark it's the black one same color as the paint and as you can see working it on it does apply very thin and even which is nice obviously there's a very small amount going on there from the spray uh, but it does make it nice and easy to apply and because there's not too much there it's also very easy to buff off now after removing the tape you can have a look on the right side of your screen you'll see 
there is still some oxidation in the center of the screen is the line where the tape was it doesn't leave so much of a tape line um, if you're as compared to using a normal polish uh, paste polish uh, because obviously there's a lot less product being used but still you can see a difference in the reflection of that tree there's more oxidation and marks on the right hand side of the panel compared to the left so here I'm just making sure that I've polished the top half of the right side of the bonnet as well to match the lower half um, and is it's it's a very easy to use product as easy if not perhaps a little bit easier than a traditional paste polish in a bottle and there you can see now the line is practically not visible um, so it's now matching top and bottom it's all looking much cleaner and clearer better definition of reflection it is darker it has removed oxidation which is nice and uh, there's a small amount left just above the tape line on the left side which I'm going to point to right now and you can see that's the difference between polished and unpolished now here we're moving on to the sealant hydrophobic wax uh, now this is a, a very easy to use product it uh, again very very atomized I really like the nozzles on these a small squirt goes a long way uh, just two squirts for this section you could probably do more um, but because it's so well atomized it spreads well it's very easy to work it's very slick go to move those hips um, very easy to move around spread around and they say that you should um, should buff it off again I don't think it needs buffing at all honestly just working it along um, it kind of flashes off um, but I flip the towel anyway and it does leave a really slick smooth finish Now I wanted to show the difference here. I'm applying the sealant to the right side, which has already been polished. So we're going to have a, a bit of a comparison here. The bottom left will be sealant only. The bottom right will be sealant and polish. And the top right will be polish only. The top left has absolutely nothing on it, which you'll see coming up in a minute. What you'll also note here is that the tape line is, of, is visible on both sides left and right which is quite interesting because the sealant doesn't mention anything about filling in scratches or, or having any kind of filling properties but you can see here on the tape line that's the section that hasn't had anything the right side has had polish and sealant the left side has only had sealant and you can still see a tape line there which is quite interesting so it it's obviously maybe thicker than I thought it originally was because it looks like it has some filling ability. The tape line is slightly visible there. Not so much uh, on the vertical, but on the horizontal it's, it's less. Now you can see I'm just uh, misting the panel with water, not too heavy and just showing you the difference in the water behavior the top left there has had absolutely nothing it's been decontaminated but nothing else the bottom left is sealant only the bottom right is sealant and polish and the top right is polish only so here's a, a closer view that's the section which has had nothing on it although there was a little bit of overspray from the sealant onto that section because it was so atomized so now we're going to move in for a closer view. This is the sealant only section. You can see the defined line there where the tape was. And it beads really fast, it beads really well. It really likes to repel that water. And here's a close-up of the beads going from small to big and running away nicely.
Now this is the right side, the bottom right, this has had both polish and sealant on it. There's an up close of the beading again, fantastic camera work here by the way. There it goes, nice fat beads. And I believe this is the top right which has only had the polish, so it has its own waxes in the polish, it's natural, uh, carnauba and synthetic, it's a hybrid. You can see the beads aren't quite as defined, they're not as fat and juicy, they sit a little bit flatter, um, so it still does have some water repellency, but not as good as what uh, happened with the sealant applied. So now we're just going to give the bonnet a, a complete deluge of water here, so you can see the difference. Fantastic repellency from the bottom sections with the sealant only and the sealant and polish. The sealant is a really fantastic hydrophobic proper, uh, product. The top left there has absolutely nothing and the top right is polish only. You can see the water does repel but not quite as fast as the sealant sections. And just for fun here, I was trying to uh, show how to dry your car with water by creating a sheet of water and pulling it down. You can see that half the beads have gone, which speeds up your drying process. I know this isn't the most efficient method, but it does help. If you can create a good steady stream of water, you can see it coming down in a straight line and it's pulling most of those beads away and leaving very little behind. You can only do this with protection on your paint. If your car has no protection, it won't do this. Now this is the back door. Uh, it has been washed, but as you can see from the demonstration here, there's no uh, protection on it whatsoever. This has been washed with an abrasive shampoo to make sure there's absolutely nothing there. And you can say uh, that this works. Uh, this has no repellency at all. But I'm going to be showing you the uh, dry and shine this is the spray on rinse off product again it's just as atomized as the other two and spraying across on a wet panel you can see it, it goes a long way uh, but be very careful windy days uh, the half your product may blow away in the wind so be careful about that it doesn't need to sit for any amount of time but I just want to show you what it looks like this was a soaking wet panel with no protection and that's what it looks like once the product has been applied. Now we're going to uh, rinse it off with water. A good strong stream of water will help and you will see the water behavior completely change. Now water doesn't want to stick to the panel at all. It really wants to repel. This is one of the better uh, water behaviors that I've seen from some of these spray on rinse off products. I find this to be very effective. Um, it really works well. There's a uh, close up. You can see this panel had nothing before and only from being wet and spraying the product on, you can see it repels water. On the back panel, there was a bit of overspray, but you can see mostly it's still sticking to the paint, whereas the door, it just wants to shake off all that water as much as possible. So if you want to just go and take your car for a drive, you'll find most of that water will blow off in the wind. And here I was trying to dry this panel with water as well. It wasn't quite so effective. Uh, now what I did here is after showing the demonstration on the back door, I applied the dry and shine to the entire bonnet. Uh, so that's including the top left section, which had no protection, and the top right, which had polish only, the bottom left had sealant only, the bottom right was polish and sealant. And you can see it has made the entire panel behave exactly the same way with the uh, water behavior. It beads up fantastically well. Here I'm just going to show what I use. This is what I use for 
a better flow of water for my uh, drying the panel with water. It's a little hose connector and uh, it creates uh, a better flow of water as you'll see here. And that sheet of water just pulls all the rest of the beads away or as much of them as possible. It leaves very little behind. You can see that sheeting and that means when you come to dry your car with a drying towel uh, there's hardly anything to pick up. It's a fantastic little tip. So there you have it, that's the uh, demonstration done. Uh, what's the verdict on these products? Um, I think they're all good. I, I don't know if this is perfect. Uh, the Jet Black Spray Polish, I like it actually, considering that you don't use that much product because it's a spray, um, and it's a very atomized spray, which could be a downside if you happen to maybe not have a garage and you have to work outside, it could go where you don't want it to go. Um, but it's, it uses such a small amount of product that, um, that works really well. I mean, it did, it lifted oxidation from the bonnet of the car. It um, definitely left behind some, uh, some wax there as well to add protection. Uh, and it also was very compatible with both of these two products uh, to go on top. So um, yeah, I like that. I did like it. And for the price, um, I think this was $7.99 that I picked it up for. So it's, it's about the same price roughly. It might be a little bit more expensive than the regular bottle of the paste product, but um, very, very quick and easy to use. Uh, no mess. Um, and I, like I say, it's, it's more economical to use because you use such a small amount of it. So I'm a fan of that. If you've got a black car, it's definitely worth trying. The the sealant, why they call it sealant hydrophobic wax, it could it, it could confuse a few people. Is it a sealant? Is it a wax? To be honest, who cares? <laughs> it's hydrophobic. It's a protectant. Does it work? Absolutely. It works really well. It beads really hard. It's very easy to apply and take off. Uh, it didn't leave any streaking or smearing. Um, it just worked really, really well. The sprayers on all of these um, are very, very good. They, they missed the product really well. So it's nice to get it onto the panel. Again, drawback is if you're working outside, it could blow half your product away. So keep that in mind. Um, however, for the price, again, about $7.99, um, I think is what it usually goes for. I think you buy them in Halfords for about a tenner a bottle. Um, but I've seen them online for the, the regular price of about $7.99. It's definitely worth it. You use very little amount of product and it works incredibly well. And I'll be interested to see how long it lasts uh, because living out uh, in the wilds of Scotland, we have um, rubbish weather a lot of the time, lots of rain um, and lots of stuff being thrown up off the roads. It'll be interesting to see how long that lasts on, uh, on my test panels. I may come back to that in the future, but definitely an excellent product. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, and then the dry and shine uh, spray and rinse, rinse wax, they call it. It's a spray and rinse product. Um, really good value for money. Um, it works really well. Again, it mists really nicely with this um, spray nozzle. So it, it gets across the panel quickly, which means you feel like you have to use less of it. Again, in windy conditions, half your product might blow away. So keep that in mind. But it's a very, very good value product. I've used very little of it. Um, you get a good amount in there and it works well on top of both the, the polish and even the sealant to refresh your protection and to give you extra hyd hydrophobicity, if that's a word. So um, I have to say I'm a fan of all of these products, especially for the price that you pay for them. They're very, very good. Now the two products that they make that I didn't try are a snow foam and I looked at the dilution ratios and the cost of the snow foam and I felt like there are better value snow foams out there on the retail level. So uh, I decided against that one because unless it's really standout amazing and from what I've heard it's, it's an average snow foam but it's not the best value for money. So I decided not to try that. And also they make a, a waterless wash and wax product. So if your car's not very dirty, you spray it onto a dry car, wipe over the dirt with a cloth and then buff it off. I, I'm not keen on that idea only because up in this part of the world, um, 
like I say, it's wet regularly. There's all sorts of stuff thrown up off the roads. I don't like the idea of dragging a cloth across a dirty car because I'm worried that I'm going to add scratches to the car. I think if I lived in a, a warm country where there was hardly any rainfall and it was only just a light bit of dust, yeah, okay, I might try it. But for the climate we have here, it's, it's not for me. That's not to say that it's a good or a bad product. I'm just, I don't have a lot of faith in that kind of product. I'm not saying I'll never try one. I may try one in the future, but as it stands at the moment, in Scotland, we are not short of water. I don't need a waterless wax, uh, a waterless wash. So I'm quite happy to go ahead with a bucket and sponge, not sponge, I'd never say sponge, <laughs> a bucket and a wash mitt, uh, two buckets. I I've got plenty of water. I'm, I'm not struggling for it. So there you have it. That is the, um, the turtle wax hybrid line. I like the branding on these. I like the way they worked. I like the pricing. So they definitely get a thumbs up from me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure you ring the notification bell as well. So you'll be notified of my next video upload. In the meantime, I've been Specky. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.